Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. So we got this crazy tower in front of us, the Lost Tower in fact. This is kind of akin to the Pokemon Tower from Lavender Town in red and blue and yellow. It's where the old deceased Pokemons go to rest their old souls. Kind of sad, somber. Music's very fitting. Places like this are kind of spoopy. Mount Pyre in uh, Diamond or Ruby and Sapphire is kind of akin to this as well. Let's check my team real quick. See if I need to swap anybody out. This looks okay. We'll put Craig in the lead. Get him some catch up experience. I think it's a little weird that people are kind of fighting inside a. Uh, I'm not sure what you'd even call this. A morgue? <laughs> a little odd. This little kid's just hanging out with his stunky. Making it all smelly in there. Oh, that's gotta be really bad, wouldn't it be really bad? Nobody wants that. And this stunky's just gonna focus its energy. Okay. So I know initially, in the previous episode, I was pretty jazzed about the opportunity to maybe do a gym battle. In that episode, or potentially the next one, this one? Well, I misremembered how this game goes, and we are a bit of a ways off before we're even gonna remotely touch one, so I apologize for that. I was trying to keep a good pace on going and doing episodes that would get us progress enough, ooh, this is gonna hurt, to the point where we'd be able to you know, see a gym battle every so often, but I goofed and I didn't quite remember how this game plays out. So we're a bit of a ways off. I think we're roughly like two-ish cities away before we get to another gym battle. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a wait, but it'll be worth it. I promise, of course, as usual here at DMike Industries, we pride ourselves on amplifying anticipation and hyping up the crowd. So yeah, we're, you know, just hanging out real cash in this graveyard. Kind of a strange part of this game. But you gotta come here. There's some pretty useful stuff that we need to grab while we're hanging out with all these corpses. And we'll gain a little bit of experience along the way. There are a few battles that we can do in here. As such, with Mr. Youngster Shorty Shorts Oliver. Looking like he just got done playing in the NBA back in the 80s. And there are wild encounters, of course. If you weren't already surprised, you can find ghost Pokemon here, in this case, Ghastly. Ghastly's an OG, who we could not get away from. Very spiteful Ghastly. But yes, Ghastly is an OG from the red, blue, and yellow era. Ghastly is a great Pokemon. Turns into Haunter, which is even greater, and then it turns into Gengar, which is the greatest. So how about that? So I've got a few repels left. Use those up while we're here. Find an Oval Stone. That is a held item that evolves a certain Pokemon into another one. I won't spoil who that is. Because we might wind up with that Pokemon someday. Probably not. I mean, you'll at least see the base level Pokemon. But that's as far as we'll get with that evolution chain. Okay. So this guy had his Pokemon stolen by those Team Galactic goons. Look at that jacket. That's amazing. I really hope somebody out there has recreated that puffy collar Gyarados jacket. That's fantastic. Also, Team Galactic stole his Pokemon. He has a Cleffa here, so obviously the juxtaposition is to be kind of funny. You know, it's a tough guy. He's got a he's got a baby Pokemon. Look at him. Ha ha ha. I get that. But where'd he get it? Did they steal all of his Pokemon? Some of his Pokemon? Did he get that chain wallet from a Hot Topic, perhaps? Who knows? 
Yes, there are many... <laughs> That's kind of funny seeing a revive inside this place. There are many battles to be had within this place. All right, that's kind of weird. Was there ever a thing where like teenagers at one point in life tried to be edgy and like film like a music video or just hang out in graveyards? Was that ever a thing? Or is that just a caricature? Like were people just making that up for like movies and stuff like that? I can imagine kids doing that. That's kind of a weird thing to do. I'm not gonna tell people how to spend their time, but you know what? That's probably not something I would do. I mean, shoot, why would you go to a graveyard when you can just go and loiter around a Walmart? That's more fun, right? Especially if you live in small town America, what else are you gonna do with your free time? You've already been to the McDonald's and the subway, you might as well go to the Walmart. So he has brought his child along to watch all of his Pokemon get their butts whooped. That's pretty cool. Well, Craig is doing a little bit, a little rough here, that's okay. We'll see what Brandy can do. I'm gonna keep swapping these two back in and out. Seeing if I can't get them some level ups. There may be an upcoming gym that could use Brandy's help, perhaps, in a few years when we get there. It's the only downside of these games is that there's a lot of fun stuff that you see. There's a lot of cool things that happen, but sometimes they're kind of spread out. So you'll have to be patient with me. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to watch anything. You can just be like, nope, no gym battle every five episodes. I'm done watching d -Mic plays. Screw him. You don't have to do anything. Your free time, your choice. If it's time that you enjoy spending something, then it's time well spent. So you do whatever you want, but I, I miss, I don't know, I don't wanna say represented. I'm like underestimated maybe how long this game is. So, that is one thing that I'm trying to be better about. I'm trying to pace these episodes out, too. I know it would be easy for me to just, like I said, I will harp on this because I think that it's a waste of time, but it's a waste of time for me to say this just because it doesn't matter. It's just my opinion. I'm not trying to hurt any feelings here. But I know for a fact that I personally do not enjoy watching games where when they're played by whoever they're playing, being played by, if there isn't at least a little bit of an attempt, like at least pretend that you are exploring a little bit, you know, give me an inclination on what you're doing. Because I can go through, I can blast through a game if I want to, but part of the reason why I feel like people watch games is because they, maybe they don't have time to play it, maybe they don't own it. And so you're kind of doing a bit of a disservice to your viewer base if you aren't willing to showcase the game a little bit. Like, I'm not saying that you need to go and be a completionist and, you know, every nook and cranny you, you go and explore. You don't have to do that. But I think that it's kind of nice to check things out a little bit, show things off. Like, there are certain parts of this game, contests, for example, that I think are a waste of time. But I'm not going to make this let's play devoid of everything. Also, screw you, Bonsly, that is a jerk move. Now we're just gonna be both sitting in confusion for a while, like a little turd. But anyway, back to my point, back to my judgment. So, I think the content is just better when you put a little effort into it. Give your fan base something to watch, something to be excited about, maybe? Hopefully my comments don't make anybody here cry fake tears. I'm not trying to do that. But yeah, I don't know. I just think if you blast through a game and you go as fast as you can, and I'm not referring to speedrunning, so just to be clear, I think speedrunning is its own thing. And can be pretty cool depending upon what it is, what etc. But just, you know, a regular cash sesh like this. I think that if you're not at least spending a little bit of time trying to show off the game itself and kind of the ins and outs that the developers had for you, you're kind of missing something. You're kind of, it's a little bit, like a bit of a letdown, I would say, for your waiting directions. I don't think, is that a thing? I've never seen that. But anyway, yeah, you know, give your viewer something to chew on. Give them something, something fun to watch. Play games however you want to, showcase content however you want to, but that's just my own personal 
opinion. I like her Pokemon. Or Pokeball Waste Belt. It's kind of a weird place for that, but whatever. We need to go ahead. We have a double battle here. Got plenty of potions. I went and bought more. Because I'm taking care of my Pokemon. Not letting them faint. Like I talked about previously, if you let your Pokemon faint, you're the worst trainer ever. I've never had a Pokemon faint in this Let's Play, not even once. So there we go. Got a double battle here with some farmers. <laughs> oh, that's... See, that seems, that seems kind of mean. Like, that seems like you're mocking people that have had dead Pokemon. What is that? Oh, he's holding a towel up to his face. For a moment. My brain is all over the place, by the way. What else is new? For a moment... I thought that that guy was holding an iron up to his face. Like the kind you'd use to, you know, iron your clothes. I was like, what on earth is happening? What is going on in this heckin' world that people are holding irons up to their faces? All right, so yeah, both of these Pokemon aren't really good choices. That's okay. Still hoping that I potentially would run into a Buizel. I think that's a pretty fun and cute Pokemon. Has an inner tube around its neck. I think otters are very cute as animals in the real world. And fun fact about otters, when they're asleep, they like to hold hands with their partners. That way they don't drift away in the water. Isn't that adorable? Yeah, that flame charge would have definitely wrecked Brandy, so I'm glad I switched. Ooh, this is gonna hurt. Thankfully, Dimitri has a ton of defense. I don't understand this whole shenanigans about waiting my command like when what when, when did that start to be a thing like am i just not paying attention i don't know that's entirely possible because here at d mike industries we have the potential to just get so invested in what we're doing that we lose focus so we should hopefully be able to swiftly take down this double battle these people mocking the dead like a bunch of jerks I will not stand for that. Yeah, I don't... Maybe this is a double battle thing? I don't know. I, I don't remember ever seeing that. So... Mm hmm. This Ponytail loves Flame Charge. I remember Flame Charge being a move that came out in black and white? I don't remember the original Pokemon, but like Zeb Strika. I don't know if that's like the evolution. But that was a move that you get early. The base Pokemon of that evolution and it learned flame charge which was cool because it was an electric type so it learned a fire move so a little bit of type coverage and I thought it was great because you could speed up it, it, it increases your speed every time you use it I think moves like that are neat so let's check out that TM real quick what did we get? Low sweep? Oh, we have two TMs I have not looked at. Oops, Volt Switch, I forgot. Okay, here we go. After making its attack, the user rushes back to switch places with a party Pokemon in waiting. Similar to U-Turn, which is a bug type move, similar thing. Here's a track to plenty of Pokemon TMs that I have not paid attention to. Oops. If it is the opposite gender of the user, the target becomes infatuated and less likely to attack. So that's kind of like uh, Confusion, a Leech Seed, those type of... Um, Kind of pseudo debuffs that aren't applied like like a burn paralysis poison etc and then we had low sweep sweep the leg the user makes a swift attack of the target's legs which lowers the target's speed stat it's actually a pretty nice move unfortunately the only person who can use it person the only pokemon that can use it is charlie and charlie already has Two fighting moves. So we don't need a third. If this was me back in my red and blue days, I would have every fighting move loaded up. But I'm trying to spread things out, guys. I'm trying to... I'm doing this for you. Cut me some slack. So here's Mischievous. I don't know if we've seen one yet, but Mischievous is a pretty cool Pokemon. It was from red and blue. No, it wasn't. It was from... Gold and silver? I don't know why I said red and blue. I was thinking of gold and silver in my head. So Murkrow and Mr. Vest are both from gold and silver. Two new additions, which I think are both great. They both get evolutions in this game, which I think is fantastic. So they're both Gen 4 evolution Pokemon. 
which I think is really interesting. And I'm actually going to go ahead and swap Craig out because Craig does not have the ability to impact Mr. Viss at all. Actually, no, we'll use Miguel. Haven't seen Miguel as much. So yeah, Mr. Viss is a Pokemon. Oops. What did I just do? So let's say Confusion is not going to be able to do... Oh, gosh dang it. Could have kept him in for at least one more turn. I totally forgot that Dark Moves... Or Dark Pokemon... Psychic type team can do nothing. That was my... My whoopsie. I'm not entirely sure why Mischievous turns around. But anyway, yes, Mischievous does get an evolution in this game. It's actually a pretty nice one, too. And from my experiences, I don't know if I've used the evolution of Mischievous before, but I think it's pretty good from the stats that I remember. And we might see it in a few upcoming episodes. Some important person might have it. We won't, but... There is a very high chance that Miguel will be evolved by us and used on a final team. Who knows? So we'll come back to that when the time comes. But Mischievous, very weak defensively. Clutching her pearls. Done and done. Oh, man. We ruined his date with his girlfriend. His date with his girlfriend in a cemetery. What is up with these people? So it appears we have reached the final floor of the Lost Tower here. These old women who look like they're paying their respects. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, cleanse tag. Very nice. So it's kind of like a pseudo repel. It's not quite as effective as repel is. So, Repel itself is going to make sure that any Pokemon below the highest level of your team, as long as the wild ones are below that level, you won't run into them. However, Cleanse Tag is not quite as good. It does reduce the amount, but it's not foolproof. So we got two escape ropes. We're going to go ahead and shoot this rope and get out of there. Very nice. So that was the Lost Tower, and we did gain strength. As you can see, once I figure out how to do this, I'm never going to use this. So now we have strength. Strength is an official HM move, but unfortunately, we will not be using strength in any capacity for a bit. It's actually pretty far away before we actually will finish said gem that we need in order to use strength. So we'll come back to that eventually. There's actually some really interesting locations that have secondary entrances that can only be accessed upon gaining strength. So that's something that we'll do a little bit of a loop back to. That's pretty fun, right? We will save our repels. We're in Selassian, Selassian? Town, whatever you, I don't know. I don't know how you say that. But we got a little banged up, so we're going to heal real quick. Our team is coming along nicely. We're shaping up. I might actually do some swip swap in here in a moment. Just to give other people some screen time. There's lots of farmers in this area and breeders. Perks Pokemon up, that's why he's here. There's the Pokemon News Organization in this shack. Must be a small business. Let's talk to these fellas. This guy's staring at the wall. Maybe he's in timeout. Wow, the Sinnoh newspaper. These guys are still clinging on to print. Does anybody still read the newspaper? Is that a thing? I know that you can read digital versions online, but there's usually pay walls. Those are a pain in the butt. So we are apparently stumbling upon their wanted ad. They want us to bring him a Machop today. No, I will not do that. I don't know what the rewards are for doing that, but I couldn't really care less. It's not really a huge deal for me. But if you talk to this guy, you get the Pokemon History Poketch app so we can see what we have caught. Most recently obtained Pokemon. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Thank you. Okay. We are doing great. We've taken 30,000 steps. That's 
three days worth of steps. Get your steps in, everybody. And here we go. So, these are the Pokemon we've obtained that you've almost all exclusively seen. Great. So, what an exciting thing. I guess that's kind of useful. So, here's the Pokemon Nursery. We're not going to use this for now. We don't really have a reason to use it. But you can drop off Pokemon. And the more you play your game, they'll raise them for you. You have to be careful with certain things, though, because they do have the ability to overwrite moves when your their Pokemon, or yours, hits a certain level. Especially when it's a move level. What did she say? No gym in this town? That's right. Why go to a town if it doesn't have a gym? What a waste. Just turn it into a parking lot. Gosh. Somebody leaving eggs there? Who is leaving their eggs in the nursery? It also makes me feel weird that like, you know, in almost every circumstance, every mammal on Earth has live birth except for a platypus. I believe there might be like some other ex exceptions or like maybe like, I don't know, like an echidna or something. But most most animals like that have live birth. And then you have certain things like certain reptiles that can give birth to things like to young without having eggs and I don't know. Why are we breaking rules? Huh? What is going on? What is this world about? So here we go. Route 210. Thanks for that. Wouldn't have been able to guess that Celestian Town was south of here. And the first step into the grass is a fight. Wonderful. Another Ponyta that I won't be catching. I actually have run into a lot of Ponyta. In case the game forgot, I have the superior fire type. I started with the Chim Jar, so back off. Don't need your pony. Although I do really like Ponyta. So just to be clear, no shade on Ponyta. I believe all of these berries are the ones, you know, I'm just going to pick all of them anyway, but the majority of the berries, there's like five or six that are status inducing, like healing poison and confusion, paralysis, burns. And then the rest of them impact like Pofin. They're used as Pofin ingredients. And then some of them can potentially be used to alter moves in battle. And some of them are for like, EV training. I'm not going to be doing any of that. If I collect any berries, it's only going to be because they're there and I'm going to use them in a pinch if I don't have any items because I'm not going to buy any items besides maybe the occasional potion, you know, just trying to keep my Pokemon safe. Like I said, if your Pokemon are fainting, you're a horrible Pokemon trainer. Also, me being completely forgetful, I did not swap my team out. I will try to do that after this fight, but for now, we're going to stay the course. Is this Apom tickles us? That's cute, right? And you're oh, I did not know that, that was a debuff move. That's a pretty nice one too. Probably help keep this Apom alive for a little longer. Oh, I get it. Oh, okay. They're not. I thought it was attacking me with its butt, like the mischievous was. It's just turning around to surprise us, to be astonishing. I understand. I am so astonished by this Apom. Hopefully we can get this done. Thank you. I feel bad just kind of powering through with headbutts. But I think it's really funny if I could try to get the flinch chain going. That was pretty enjoyable. Okay, we got Psyduck. Yeah, I need to swap these Pokemon out, get some fresh blood in here. Probably not going to dip too far into the reserves. I like having a a healthy rotation of about six to ten that I can pick from. And there's still some Pokemon that I'm looking for, so if I do find them, I will include them. I was actually looking around a little bit, and I don't know, has that waiting directions thing always been there? I'm getting paranoid now. But anyway, I've been looking around in the underground a little bit. Because that pile of stones that we saw outside the Lost Tower is related to that. That's something that we'll dip into in a future episode if we ever get to it. It's very cumbersome. Involves a lot of walking around. No, we will not use safe. I don't even need to look that up. I know what that is. Okay, Giraffe Rig. I think Giraffe Rig is psychic and normal. So a dark move would be... Ideal? But yeah, there, there was some wandering around in the underground. Underground with my pants down. 
And I'm trying to hold off because I there are some Pokemon down there that I think would be interesting to use on the team. But I'm obviously only going to do that if I can show it. And I don't really have a reason to do the underground quite yet. So I might go back in the future and show some stuff off, but thankfully the, the underground does scale. So when you do go under there and you're looking up for different Pokemon, it should keep up with your levels. So this area is a little bit of a mess. And thankfully I can ride my bike so I can fight more children. Two things I love in life. Riding bikes, fighting kids. Oh yeah. And I forgot to swap my Pokemon out again. I'm just gonna keep saying it. Swap your Pokemon out. Swap your Pokemon out. Swap your Pokemon out. We'll get to it someday. There definitely needs to be some equity in what I'm trying to do. This Let's Play was built on the belief that everybody gets a shot. All Pokemon were created uh, sort of equal? No. I'm not really sure that applies here. But I do want to show some stuff off so that way there is variety. I know my previous Let's Plays, I did one, I did a previous Let's Play Pokemon in the past, and it was very much a run and gun. So I'm trying to essentially make up for my old ways. Great. Thank you, Clefairy. I remember Clefairy being a Pokemon that was interesting in the in the OG games. You know, with whole with the whole map. Oh, it's right. It's a fairy type now. I forgot. That makes sense, right? But I remember there was talk about how Clefairy, or maybe Clefable, was supposed to be the living version of Gengar. Like when Clefables die because they look similar with the tail and with the ears, then maybe that's what Gengar is in its living life. Living <laughs> in its living life, AKA life. I also don't remember anything about fairy type Pokemon, so I have no idea if what the weaknesses are, the strengths, any of that. I got nothing. So hopefully this does something. Great. So Dimitri was a horrible choice. Was not thinking of that at all. I goofed. I done goofed. But we whomped these kids. Feels really good. Excellent work, everybody. And they put their hair on the opposite side, which I think is a nice touch. Nope, wrong button. I think I'm going to screw that up probably until the end of time, as well as this. Nope. Okay, everybody, we did it. We figured out how to use buttons. We're doing okay. All right, so let's go ahead and swap out Charlie for a little bit. Let's bring in Samuel for Dimitri and our unnamed Combi that we were given. We'll talk about that in a future episode. And we'll bring in Sharon for now because Miguel is doing just fine. And we'll hold off on the egg. I have an idea of what I'm going to do with that egg. Gonna eat it? No. You cannot eat eggs in this game? Maybe that's what it is. Like the game programs Pokemon as youth and you're not allowed to eat them. But I'm pretty sure that they do show different characters on the television show having eaten eggs. Is that what Pichu sounds like? Ooh. It's like Pichu has a sore throat. Get you some lozenges, Pichu. No, that's one of the things that I'm always never sure if they always have these residual effects. And those always, those always get my goat. You know, those always make me real annoyed. I don't really have anything that's good for this. I swapped out my options that would have been a little bit better. Let's just use Craig again. Although we are paralyzed. It's a little annoying. Paralyzed by the fear of this Pikachu. So there's a, there's a good look at the Male Pikachu. It's got that straight tail instead of kind of the bubbly tail. I think that was kind of a neat addition. I don't remember what generation it is that they introduced male slash female gender sprite differences. I want to say it was this generation, but I think it's a nice touch. It's pretty fun. Seeing all the differences. 
gives people more things to look for. Especially if you're shiny hunting, maybe there's a specific gender of shiny Pokemon that you want. So, Hapini, the pre-evolution of Chansey. It looks like it's wearing pants that are too big for it. Also, I think I mentioned this before. Is its hair pulled up into like hair, quote unquote hair, pulled up into like a weird ponytail? Is that like some sort of like growth? Some sort of additional appendage? I don't know. It looks kind of gross to me, though. Hopefully I didn't offend all those dozens of Hapini stands that are watching this episode. I apologize in advance if I hurt your feelings. And now we have great balls. Feeling pretty good about that. Okay, hopping over that ledge. I don't know what is down this way. These trainers. At the very least, these past two episodes have been chock full of battles. So if you guys are into that. This guy's here with his daughter. They have the Team Galactic Specials. The Glammeow and the Stunky. Makes me wonder a little bit if... Uh, Team Galactic would be very interested in coming after these guys. There is the downside to using Pokemon that you're trying to train up that aren't the best. And I don't really have any sort of type advantage. Brandy and Craig are very poor choices for this. So unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot going on in that direction. But, you know, I'm just doing my best, all right? Trying to make things work, trying to put food on this table for this family, this Let's Play family. It's okay. Sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but I think that's for your benefit. Because if I don't know, then you can kind of figure it out. It's like when you're a kid and you're in school and you're reading literature, and then you get asked, like, what do you think that the author meant by this? When you're absorbing media of any kind, you can apply your own meaning to it. So here at DMIC Industries, we pride ourselves in giving our viewership the opportunity to figure out what the heck I'm saying and you decide all on your own. That's a gift. I don't know too many other Let's Players who are willing to be that open-minded and willing to provide such a service to their viewership. So, you're welcome. But yes, Brandy is a poor choice. She's been flinching a bunch. She's very weak to the stunky. We're gonna swap out. Nope, oh, that would be swapping Craig out. We'll give we'll give Craig one more shot, and then we'll swap into Sharon. Get her a little bit of that participatory experience. If Craig can't do the deed, we'll see. It is interesting though, as I play through these through this game specifically, how I have. You know, these episodes I like to keep anywhere between the. 25 to 35 minute range and there will be there will be some times when I'm going back and I'm thinking like I've played through a, like a good chunk based on the time that I played this game and it doesn't feel like I make much progress I know that I am making progress as the stunky confuses itself to death that's great sucka but sometimes it feels like I'm not making a ton of progress even though I am just playing through the game normally uh, Whirlwind. The target is blown away and a different Pokemon is Dragon. No. That is not great. So we will pass on that. My goodness, the defense of Brandy is just absurd, but the attack... Not great. Not great. Your Bronzor is not going to be your powerhouse on your team, but it will hang in there. So I ruined this father-daughter ex excursion. I'm sorry. Sorry? Not really. Okay, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, okay, great. You know, what a, uh, what a cool NPC. Great, and I do believe that because they just mentioned Roost, that's actually a cool move. Let's check it out, the official, I know what Roost is. Let's check the official thing of old read strength too. Target is slug with a punch throwing at maximum power. It's also a poke catch hidden move. Yes, it is. It's a very good move. Roost. The user lands and rests its body. The, the move restores the user's HP by up to half. That's pretty good. That's actually the move that you get in Heart Gold and Soul Silver from Falconer, the first gym leader. So that's a really nice TM. 
Really nice. Are you a trainer too? Okay, so we have one last battle to do today. A rookie breeder. I don't even want to know what that would involve. She's got a nice big bucket of balls. Big heavy balls there for Amber. She's got a Cleffa. Hopefully she's got all baby Pokemon. That'd be adorable, wouldn't it? To have them be run into by my prehistoric Pokemon. End their day. Seems kind of aggressive, but you got to do what you got to do. No mercy. Sweep the leg. Okay. And a fairy type. I don't know... Oof. What is you, Sharon? I don't know much about fairy types. Like, when I think about it, I know that there's something with dragon types and steel and poison. I don't remember, for one reason... Sorry, sorry. For some reason, I can't remember anything that happens with fairy type Pokemon. I don't know why. I have so much struggling time. That's a really horribly worded sentence. I struggle so much with time trying to figure out what on earth fairy type Pokemon are. I don't care for them. I won't really use them very often. It's it's something, you know. They're not my favorite type, but they're, they're just very forgettable to me. Apologies to everybody who loves fairy types, but I don't know. And they kind of retroactively went and applied it to certain Pokemon, so I just... I'm just an old man who's stuck in his ways with my original 16 types, although I shouldn't say 16 because gold and silver applied dark and steel, making it 16 at the time. So there were actually only 14 when this started. So an old, old man would say 14, but I think gold and silver are wonderful additions. So I will say 16 because I love them so much. They're my favorite. And I guess next time to start off the episode, we'll... Check out Cafe Cabin and figure out why there's Psyduck up there. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.